Well, Tesla's master plan part three is finally out and it is a doozy. Just on the vehicle front alone, it calls for 143 billion batteries. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. When I opened up Master Plan Part 3 last night, I realized this is not your father's master plan. And that, by the way, is a reference to an old, I think it was Oldsmobile or Buick ad from GM. They said, this is not your father's Oldsmobile. I think that was it. Anyway, it was trying to be for the newer generation. But what I basically thought was, we've gone from the secret Master Plan Part 1, which was published in 2006, which I brought up just for old time's sake. Look at this. This is basically a page or two and it's got four bullet points at the bottom, nice and simple, straightforward and everything. We've moved from that to a 41 page, incredibly well researched document that has a ton of information in it. So I'll probably do two or three videos on the master plan part three, but today I wanna to focus specifically on cars and batteries. All right, so if you're following along at home, this is page 22 of the master plan. And of course I will put a link to the document down below so you can check it out yourself. It's chock full of stuff. But anyway, like I said today, I'm just going to focus on batteries for transportation. And of course the vehicle mix that Tesla projects. Now Tesla is not talking about making all of these vehicles themselves, but they're talking about going from internal combustion engines to battery electric vehicles. And they're showing examples of what their vehicle would be in that place. And also showing the cathode technology, which by the way, they're only projecting as two chemistries, either LFP or NMC batteries. So really interesting about that. So starting with what they say, and then we'll get to the chart. Vehicles, today there are 1.4 billion vehicles globally, an annual passenger vehicle production of about 85 million vehicles, according to OI. Based on pack size assumptions, the vehicle fleet will require 112 terawatt hours of batteries. <sighs> Autonomy has potential to reduce the global fleet and annual production required through improved vehicle utilization. Now, they don't talk about that here. They actually give us 89 million cars per year. But the basic idea here is if you can replace five personal vehicles on the road with one robo taxi, then you're reducing the number of vehicles that need to be produced by quite a bit. So that's what they're talking about. So that could reduce the number from like 85 or 90 million down to 50 or 60 million vehicles per year or even potentially less than that. So that of course would reduce drastically the number of batteries you'd have to produce. And I'm sure Tesla is planning on doing something like that as part of their master plan. But here they're talking about if they just one-to-one -one replace placed all the gas vehicles on the road with EVs. Continuing on, standard range vehicles can utilize the lower energy density chemistries, LFP or lithium iron phosphate, whereas longer range vehicles require higher energy density chemicals, high nickel. Cathode assignment to vehicle segment is listed in the table below. High nickel refers to low to zero cobalt nickel manganese cathodes currently in production under development at Tesla, Tesla's suppliers, or in research groups or and in research groups, I guess they're talking about using all of them. So basically what they're talking about is going from NMC, which is nickel manganese cobalt. Cobalt is a very, very expensive and ethically complex mineral to mine. So they're trying to get rid of that even in their high nickel content batteries. So I guess it'll go from NMC to NM almost zero C. <laughs> all right, I'm going to move myself so we can sort of see the entire chart. The part that's hidden by me is just dashes because there's no totals to the, whatever these vehicles are. Anyway, you can see vehicle types are compact, which is the, going to be the new Model 2 or whatever Tesla calls that. The thing that's going to be built in Mexico and Berlin and Shanghai, we know that now, 2 million in Mexico or Mexico slash Texas, 1 million each in Berlin and Shanghai. So that's where the compact car is going to be made. And those are approximately the numbers coming out soon. You can see that the vehicle sales are much, much higher than that, but we'll get to that in just a second. Then we get to the midsize cars, which are the current Model 3 and Y, commercial slash passenger vans. Interestingly enough, that is there for Tesla. They are definitely looking at that market segment. You can see it says TBD. And actually, if we kind of scroll down here, they have a lovely like image of all of this stuff. And you can see there's like a 300 million vans or whatever that thing's going to be and 700 million compact Model 2 type vehicles. Then we get to the large sedans, SUVs and trucks, which would be the Model S and X and Cybertruck. We then get to buses, which is TBD, which is also interesting that Tesla has the idea of creating buses for themselves, which also makes sense. If they're going to expand into every vehicle category, they need to make some sort of a city bus because there are quite a few of them. In fact, my Patreon patrons and I were talking about this on Discord last night. 
how useful it could be to replace older school buses and city buses and things like that with newer EV buses. And of course, if you could add autonomy to these buses so they just drove themselves around because they have the same route that they go around and around all the time, you would not only reduce pollution, but also reduce the cost to cities and school districts and things to have these buses in operation. So really interesting ideas. It's really cool to see that Tesla at least has the idea that a bus is a very necessary mode of transportation. And then to round this out, we have short range heavy trucks and long range heavy trucks. So we have, you know, semi trucks that haul big loads around and we have one that's like a shorter range that would have a 500 kilowatt pack size and one that's a longer range that has an 800 kilowatt pack size. And by the way, that pack size of 800 kilowatt hours is really interesting because of course, Tesla has never told us exactly how big the pack is in the Tesla semi. So people have estimated it was between 800 and 900 kilowatt hours. And this seems to indicate that we're looking at 800 kilowatt hours, which is very, very efficient for getting the approximate approximately 500 miles of range out of the vehicle with towing like 80,000 pounds of load. All right, so let's look at the cathode technology, which is kind of the deciding factor when you get to these types of batteries. Notice we're not looking at any solid state batteries. We're not looking at any technology that doesn't exist already and can't be scaled. And also, of course, we're looking at a technology with LFP that CATL is amazing at doing. And Tesla looks to be about to sign a contract with them to build a huge number of LFP batteries in North America, likely in in a state like Texas or close by. So you can see that their plan is to move all of the Model 3 and Y to LFP technology. Currently, that is only the standard range Model 3 and some Model Ys and things that are made in China. I can't recall if there are any LFP-based technologies that are built in the Berlin factory. But anyway, the, the goal for them is to move all of these mid-size cars to LFP technology, along with, of course, the compact car. The big downside about LFP traditionally has been that it doesn't have as high of an energy density, which means that you have to have more batteries, more weight to get the equivalent amount of range. But CATL has done some amazing stuff with battery chemistry, and they've got that almost equivalent. And LFPs have a huge advantage, which is that you can charge them up to 100%, not 80% every day. And they like that. And they can cycle more times than NMC batteries without losing as much range. So of course, our standard range Model 3 that we just got has prismatic LFP batteries in it. And that's a really interesting factor. It means that that even though the car has less range, we can charge it up to actually more than the range of our Model Y on a daily basis because we only charge the Model Y to 80%. So that's less than 270 miles, which is 100% charge for the Model 3. So interesting stuff. But anyway, you can see that the Model 3 and Y are going to go full LFP eventually. Now, currently that's in prismatic cells, which is kind of a rectangular box that CATL makes. But the word is, and quite possibly the technology might be 4680 form factor when they build these LFP batteries in the United States. We will have to wait and see. We don't know. But anyway, you can see that most of the vehicles that Tesla is going to be producing are going to be LFP technology, including the bus, which doesn't need to have a huge range, and also the short range heavy semi trailer, which of course leaves the long range semi heavy, the large sedans, SUVs and trucks like the Cybertruck and Model S and X. And interestingly enough, the commercial passenger vans, I would have thought that would have been LFP technology but apparently Tesla thinks that they need to get higher energy density out of those vans. You're thinking about things like Amazon vans or UPS vans or passenger vans, driving a short distance, making a stop, driving a short distance, making a stop. So I guess maybe that type of use case, they've analyzed it and they've decided they need high nickel for that type of vehicle. So anyway, you can see that the pack sizes range from 53 kilowatt hours for the compact, which is really interesting because our Model 3 has a 57.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. So I thought that the compact would probably Probably fall in the range more like 40 to 45 kilowatt hours, but clearly they're intending to build something that's going to have a very good range if it's going to be a small car. So it'll be a light car and it has a 53 kilowatt hour battery pack size. We could be looking at close to 300 miles of range. And that in my mind would be an absolutely killer feature if they could do that, right? I think a lot of people think that this compact car is going to have like 200 miles of range. So it'll be like a city car, but you can't really use it outside that. But I think what we're looking at is Tesla planning to build this for robo taxis. And if you're going to do that, you need more range so that the car is not constantly sitting at a charging station. Then of course, for the midsize cars, an average of 75 kilowatt hours and then 100 kilowatt hours for the passenger vans and the large sedans, SUVs and trucks. And then moving on up 300 kilowatt hours for a city type bus and then 500 and 800 kilowatt hours for the semi trucks. And then skipping down to the global fleet and global fleet in terawatt hours, you can see they're looking at 1.4 billion vehicles. So this is the replacement 
replacement of the entire internal combustion engine vehicle fleet with EVs. So this is not a per year thing. This is an overall thing that'll take 20 years or something like that to happen. But they need 112 terawatt hours of battery storage to make this happen or 112,000 gigawatt hours, which is just a huge, huge number. So how many vehicles do we need to make this happen per year? We need 42 million of these compact cars. Remember Tesla's initial plan here is to make 4 million of these. So that's only 10% of the net necessary number of vehicles. Now, Tesla intends, of course, to scale up, I'm sure, to a much bigger number because they want to produce 20 million cars, of which you can guess probably 70% will be these compact cars. So you're looking at maybe 14 or 15 million of these compact cars. But still, that's just a fraction of the 42 million vehicles that need to be produced per year in that size category. Then, of course, we've got the Model 3 and Y type vehicle, and you need 24 million of those vehicles per year. Tesla is currently somewhere around 10% of that, say 2 million vehicles per year run rate. So again, you're looking at a huge, huge expansion. So we're looking at 10x from the projection for the compact cars and 10x from the current state of the art for midsize cars. And then while the kilowatt hour battery size goes up, you can see that the number of vehicles goes down radically here. Number one is commercial and passenger vans because you still need 10 million of these. So that is a lot of those vehicles per year. So that's actually still a big number. If people don't know, Rivian is already producing vehicles for Amazon that are EVs that go around. So that would be that vehicle, but there's only a few thousand of those. So again, we've got a huge, huge growth potential in that area. Then of course we get to the Cybertruck and on a smaller scale, the Model S and X. And then of course, things like the Ford F-150 Lightning, the Rivian R1T, et cetera. So you need 9 million of those vehicles. So again, a really, really big number and just a tiny fraction of those are being made right now. Then you need a million buses per year, a million short range heavy trucks and 2 million long range heavy trucks to eventually replace the entire fleet. So you're looking at 89 million vehicles per year, which falls in line with the approximate number of vehicles that are produced per year in mostly internal combustion engine vehicles still, although the EVs are replacing them rapidly. All right, so with those numbers in mind, let's turn to my favorite spreadsheets. <laughs> so, so okay, so we've got, you know, what I did was I basically replicated all of the information up here and then projected out approximately what the gigawatt hours of production would be per year. So notice this is not the total, this is a per year thing, right? So you've got 42 million vehicles per year times a pack size of 53 kilowatt hours gives us 2,226 gigawatt hours just for the compact car. And down here, I'll, I'll talk about this graph more in just a minute, but that's that's basically you see the batteries and gigawatt hours is the blue and the vehicles per year is the orange that's on top of that. And of course, given the numbers, even though you've got the smallest battery pack size for these compact vehicles, you can see that far and away, this is the greatest number of gigawatt hours of batteries that we actually need is for the compact car because we're selling 42 million of those per year. Next, if we turn to the Model 3 and Y mid-sized vehicles, we get to 1800 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. For vans, we need about 1000 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. For luxury vehicles in trucks and things like that, we need 900 gigawatt hours of batteries. For buses, we need 300. For short range trucks, we need 500. And for long range trucks, we need 1600 gigawatt hours of batteries. And in grand total, that gives us 8,326 gigawatt hours of batteries per year just for transportation. Remember, that's not energy storage or anything else. That's how many gigawatt hours we need. If you had to use 2170 batteries to make that 8,326 gigawatt hours of batteries, each of those little batteries only has a storage capacity of 0.0172 kilowatt hours per battery. So you would need 143,207,200 batteries per year if you were making this with 2170s. Now, obviously with 4680s and with prismatic battery cells, it's gonna be a much reduced number from that, but that is a pretty insane number when you look at that. And just for funsies, CATL, which is the largest battery manufacturer in the world, currently produces about 280 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. So in order to produce the 8,300 gigawatt hours of batteries, you would actually need almost 30 CATLs. So you would need 30 of the largest battery manufacturing companies in the world to produce the number of batteries that just have to go into transportation. Again, not even taking account of energy storage. So these are massive, massive numbers. And also just in terms of number of years, if you're looking at producing 
producing 89 million vehicles per year. To get to the number of vehicles to replace the entire fleet would take about 16 years, according to these calculations as you look at it. So these are really, really big numbers. And of course, that means you could just turn that all on tomorrow, which is not going to happen. It's going to take a good solid 10 years to ramp up to being able to make 8,300 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. I don't know, maybe a little bit less than that, but as a guess, somewhere around seven to 10 years to do that. So we're looking at 16 years once it's at full ramp up, but it's probably going to take at least half a decade to a decade to get to that full ramp up. So you can at least add another five years on top of that. So we're looking at 20 to 25 year plan here to replace all internal combustion engine vehicles with EVs. So this is a very long-term plan. And that in brief, is exactly what Tesla's master plan part three is all about. It's about these very huge long-term plans. If you look back at master plan part one, it was all about Tesla as like, what can we do to make ourselves a successful company and to start moving the needle? Master plan part three is clearly all about the world, not just Tesla. And that's what Elon Musk said, you know, as a teaser to investor day back at the beginning of March, he said, look, this is not a master plan for Tesla. This is a master plan for the world. And you can clearly see that from these numbers because Tesla is not going to be able to manufacture all of this stuff. So it's incumbent on not just Tesla, but all of its partners and everybody else in the world that does manufacturing to help out. And if they do, hopefully by 2050, we'll be living in a very, very different world. All right, I hope you enjoyed geeking out with me in this episode. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon and also my YouTube channel members. I appreciate your support so much. Like I said, we had some really interesting conversations about Master Plan Part 3 last night. I expect those will continue through the weekend as the document is huge and we haven't all digested all of the same parts. And of course, if you want to join the team, just check out the links in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.